Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is SJP, the host of the SJP Files. Have you heard about Anchor? If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Once again, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Okay, okay, okay. I know, I know, I know. You had to have been expecting this. You really had to have been expecting this. I know I said this last week on my show that I that the <clears throat> Phoenix Suns needed to end their series with the Los Angeles Clippers by hook or by crook, by dominant or squeaking. And last night was a dominant performance by the Phoenix Suns, which I will get to later today on my show when my new equipment gets in. And it will be on the technical podcast feed. Most likely. I may do it on the Spreaker feed. I haven't quite decided yet when my new equipment gets here. But that's not the point. Here's the actual fucking point ladies and gentlemen thank you to chris paul for putting the los angeles clippers out of their fucking misery thank you chris thank you old man cp for putting the clippers out of my fucking misery thank you for getting these motherfuckers out of my face thank you for getting the, 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 the these fraudulent bums the hell off my screen thank you so much i love it it was a it was a fantastic experience last night to watch the phoenix suns essentially dominate they dominated the los angeles clippers for them i wouldn't say okay they led essentially wire to wire they didn't really okay god damn it because i'm starting to remember like the first half was pretty close first half scores were pretty close it was what was it 66 to 57 it's a nine point game it's a night that's that's not a horrendous game but in the second half blew him off the court 64 to 46 in the second half for a total of 130 to 103 deandre Eaton back on his shit 16.17 rebounds devin booker back on his shit yeah like 22 points chris paul 41 points. He had 30 in the second half. He had 30 in the second half. Paul George, playoff P, did. Playoff P attempted to show up. But he just didn't have much left. He just didn't have much left. I'm going to give Paul George some respect, okay? I know a lot of people know that I like to kill Paul George on this show. I like to kill Pandemic P, but... He showed up in like the biggest way in this series. Kawhi Leonard went down in game. I want to say what was it? Game four of their series against Utah. And then Paul George put that team on his back. Won the next two games. Has had career playoff game after career playoff game after career playoff game in this playoff run. His last game, he scored 41 points. Had 13 rebounds, six assists. He went fifth. He missed five shots total that game in game five against the Phoenix Suns in a closeout game. But old man CP said, I ain't losing this shit. Old man CP stuck his chest out and said, I'm going to the. I told y'all, old man CP gonna get himself a ring this year because I don't think any either team in the East could beat them. I really don't. If Giannis comes back healthy, which I assume, I hope he will. I hope he comes back healthy. But he's still going to be hobbled. That hyperextension is going to be a pain for the rest of the playoffs. (coughs) Sorry about that. Ew, the hell was that on my mic? Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, Where was I? Yes, that that hyperextension is going to mar the rest of his playoff run this year 
it's 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 gonna hamper him a bit and even if it doesn't hamper yo you got deandre ayton in the middle he gonna be meeting Giannis at the rim and a couple of those shots and he might make he gonna give Giannis some some problems because deandre ayton from that what well, that draft was like a couple years ago that draft with him luca trey young trey young nursing an ankle injury I think the Suns, they're the healthiest team right now. Yes, Booker showed up maskless, putting buckets up, 22 points. Shout out to Devin Booker, that light-skinned motherfucker right there, like Chris Paul was calling him. God damn it. Yo, this is so much fun. I I love to see Chris Paul get a ring. And like I said, old man CP go get himself a ring this year. And not only that, but... This is going to move him up the all-time, like, point guard rankings. This is going to put him squarely at, like, fifth. He's probably already in that conversation, but it's going to put him ahead of a lot of guys, ahead of guys like John Stockton. It's going to put him in that kind of, like, it's going to put him in the top five, probably behind, let's see, yeah, behind Isaiah, behind Magic, probably Oscar Robinson. Right now, he's probably beyond behind John Stockton, too. John Stockton got two finals appearances. John Stockton doesn't have any rings yet. So, I, uh, yeah, I would put him definitely in that, like, top five point guard list of all time, without question, if he wins this ring. Hell, even if he doesn't win this ring. But you didn't come here to hear me talk about the Clippers. You, you really didn't come here to hear me talk about the Suns. I take that back. You did hear... You didn't hear, come here to hear me talk about the Suns. You came here to hear me shit on the Clippers. And that's what I'm about to do. Oh, God. The Clippers. The Clippers. The Clippers. The Clippers have a big decision to make this offseason. First of all, Tyron Lou. Shout out to T. Lou. Fantastic coach. Unlike Doc Rivers' bum ass, Ty Lou knows how to make not only in-game adjustments, but in-series adjustments. He knows how to make in-game and in-series adjustments. And that's why he went small against Utah. That's why they were fucking throwing out zones against Luka in the first round uh, against the Bucks. T. Lou knows how to throw out fantastic defensive plays. Fantastic, you know, in-game adjustments, in-series adjustments that allow his teams to win. With that being said... They had a big decision to make with Kawhi Leonard this offseason. Because right now, and I loathe myself to say this, because I've been shitting on Paul George for like two years now. I've been shitting on, actually, I've been shitting on Playoff P for about three, four years now, ever since he gave himself the Playoff P nickname. But Playoff P showed up this year. Yeah, early you had a couple Pandemic P games. And yes, he hasn't had great shooting performances this whole Playoff run, but Playoff P showed up this series there weren't no backboard shots there weren't no shots hitting the side of the backboard or hitting the back of the backboard or hitting the shot clock or any shit like that he wasn't airballing shit playoff piece showed up in this series and i gotta give playoff piece some respect but this team like i said has a lot to think about who you gonna keep you gonna keep demarcus cousins luke Kennard, you gave 64 million dollars ain't do shit for you Nicholas Batum, really? I know Nick, Nicholas Batum has had a good year, but really? Nicholas Batum, 20 minutes? You're relying on that guy to win you a championship? To help you win a championship? Reggie Jackson? I know Reggie's had some good games. Reggie has had some good games. But Reggie Jackson is a guy who you're going to rely on to get you to the next level? Reggie Jackson ain't that dude. Reggie Jackson is a supporting player he's a role player he's a supporting actor he is a role player who needs to get his ass on the x side marcus morris i give him another one marcus morris very good series good player i wouldn't have given him 64 million dollars just like i wouldn't have given luke canard 64 million dollars terrence man good young player not ready yet he's not ready for this stage yet to be on a kid he not consistent enough and you got your boy cyborg sent from the future to ruin everybody's life the claw 
Kawhi Leonard, who's doing what exactly right now? Nothing. Motherfucker, yo, this dude wasn't even sitting on the bench. You couldn't even dress up and be on the bench with your crew in your home. You couldn't even, yo, my guy, you can't even be bothered to show up on the bench to, to, to support your teammates, to be on the bench while with your boys. Kawhi Leonard, yo, when people were calling Kawhi Leonard the best player in the league two years ago, looking at it now, you look like a fucking fool. You look like a fucking fool calling Kawhi Leonard the best player in the league now. Look at him. Is he the best player in the league right now? Trick question. Hell no, he's not the best player in the league right now. He looks like a fucking bum. He's not. He is not in the league of guys like LeBron James and Kevin Durant. He's not in their league. And right now, if he had told me two years ago that I had said this, I'd have called you a goddamn liar. I would take Paul George over Kawhi Leonard because Paul George is healthy. Paul George is healthy. He had Paul George has had one serious leg injury his entire career, and it took him a couple years to get right, but he is right right now. And Paul George is one of those guys. He may not be a top five player. He's not a top five player. He's not a top 10. I don't know if he's a top 10 player, but he definitely has top five, top 10 talent. There are a lot of guys who have top five, top 10 talent, but aren't exactly top 10 players. Why? Because there are like 10 guys you like better than them. There's top 10 talent and there's actually top 10 players. Paul George is a top 15 player right now. I cannot name you 15 guys in the league. I would have him. I would rather have more than Paul George. Paul George used to go to wars with LeBron James and the Miami Heat in Indiana. They were the only team in the Eastern Conference that really gave them any trouble during those years. And that's mainly because of Paul George. And Paul George deserves for people to put some respect on his name. And I'm going to put some respect on his name. I was one of those dudes been shitting on him for years. And Patrick Beverly, don't think I forgot about you. Don't think I forgot about you and your punk bitch move. I saw what you did, nigga. But don't worry. We're going to worry about that in a minute. Back to Paul George. Paul George has proven himself to be a superstar in this league. He is a superstar player. And a year ago, I wouldn't have said that. A year ago, I was shitting on him like everybody else was shitting on him. But he deserves his flowers. He deserves that. The Pandemic P nickname has not been retired. But it's become an afterthought. You've earned a lot of respect from a lot of guys. And if I'm the Los Angeles Clippers, you might want to think, what are you going to do with, with Kawhi Leonard? Because Kawhi Leonard, I believe, is up. I believe he either has an opt-out this year or he's just a straight-up free agent. I'm going to check his contract real quick. But I believe that either, yeah, yeah, either he's a flat-out free agent. Yeah, he's got a player option for this year. For the 21 22 season. He has a player option. He's scheduled to make $36 million. So the real question is, does he, real question is, does he opt out of his contract and go somewhere else? He's 30 years old. Kawhi Leonard cannot be your number one. He has without question top five talent. When he is healthy, he is without question a top five player in this league. There are not four guys There are not five guys I would rather have more than Kawhi Leonard. There are about four guys I would take over Kawhi. Uh, Kevin, I would give me, give me LeBron James, obviously. Give me Kevin Durant. I would probably, I'd take definitely a healthy Anthony Davis and a healthy Joel Embiid. And then I would take Kawhi Leonard. Hell, I might even take Dame over Kawhi because Kawhi, because Dame's healthy, but I've seen Kawhi do it on the biggest stage. I've seen Kawhi do it on the biggest stages. I've seen him hit big shots. I've seen him make big plays. I've seen him win championships. I've seen him win finals MVPs. But 
you got a serious decision to make if you're the Clippers. A serious decision to make. And honestly, I might consider letting him walk. I might either consider letting him walk or trying to do a sign and trade to get somebody. Because he's probably going to opt out. If I were him, I would opt out. You make more money. You make more money and with a new secure contract. And you injury prone anyway. That's why Anthony Davis taking that big contract from the Lakers. Yo, he probably could have made more money on the open market. Or if he had waited a year, I think he could have made made more money. But he took his contract. Why? Simple. He gets hurt too often. He knows he's injury prone. And this leg injury for Kawhi is going to haunt him for the rest of his career. But with that being said, Patrick Beverly, get your bum ass over here. I saw what you did like a bitch at the end of the game pushing Chris Paul why because your feelings hurt because y'all sorry you suck you trash always you the big dog always puffing your chest out motherfucker got a Napoleon complex and he need to stay off my screen what what the Clippers need to go all in and all in and by all in I mean you take Patrick Beverly you take Luke Kennard Hell, I know Reggie Jackson made himself some money. You take Marcus Morris, you package them up, and see if you can get somebody else. See if you can get somebody else. Or you do a sign and trade with Kawhi, seeing if you can get somebody else in the Clippers, someone who's, I don't know, healthier. I know the Clippers and the Trailblazers got some issues with, with the whole, you know, Dame time thing from last year in the bubble. But hey, Clippers, if you could find a way to package some shit together to get to get your boy game big game dang damn Lillard damn dollar I I wouldn't hate it I wouldn't hate it but the Clippers are finally gone this fallacy that the Clippers were going to win a championship this year is finally been over I've been screaming it since the first round the Phoenix Suns and the Los Angeles Lakers Healthy are the two best teams in the Western Conference. I don't care if Kawhi Leonard had been in this series. I still would have picked the Phoenix Suns because I think the Suns are just better. I think the Suns are just better. The Clippers may have had the two best players on the court, but you give me the next five from the give me the next five, six, maybe even seven players from the Phoenix Suns. They were just a better team. And Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are not the defenders they once were. They're just not. And Mikael Bridges and Jay Crowder and uh, and uh, what's his name? Shit, the the Johnson dude. God damn it! What's the name? Was it Jalen Smith? No one Jalen Smith. Anyways, the other dude, the not pain, not campaign, but doesn't matter. Cameron Johnson. That's the dude name. Johnson. Those three. Fantastic defensive players. All would have given those guys a hell of a lot of trouble. Even if Kawhi had played this series, I still would have picked the Suns. I think it would have gone seven, but I still would have picked the Suns because I trust CP hell of a lot more than I trust Paul George and Kawhi. I trust I don't trust Kawhi to stay healthy, and he couldn't stay healthy. And this is the type of shit that costs you championships. And I know Paul George was out here screaming, hey. If Kawhi had been there, he wasn't screaming, he was talking about it. If Kawhi had been there, we would still be playing. You would still be playing if Kawhi had been there. If Kawhi had been there, you'd still been playing. But guess what? You're not playing anymore. Why? Because you're trash. You're not playing anymore because I'm tired of excuses. You lost. It's over. Your season's done. You You don't need to tear it down, but you need to find some new avenues. You need to make a couple moves, and you need to figure out what the hell you're going to do with Kawhi Leonard. Because if Kawhi Leonard can play like 60 games in the regular season and and not make it through an entire playoff run, you need to find something else to do with him. Because right now, his inability to stay healthy is costing you championships. It's costing you championships. Last year, you played well. Last year, you load managed. You load managed last season 
you load managed this season. Both four seeds and both hellish roads. If you had played better in the regular season, maybe you'd have got a higher scene and maybe an easier route. You'd have gotten easier route to the NBA, to the Western Conference Finals. The Phoenix Suns played hard all season. They got the banged up Lakers in the first round, beat them. Then they got the banged up Nuggets in the second round, beat them. And then got the banged up Clippers in the third round, beat them. Instead, you had to go through Luka seven games. Then you barely got past Utah, who was also banged up seven games. No, that that was six. And then you got the two. And then you got Chris Paul not playing. Chris Paul didn't play the first two games of the series. You should have won at least one of those games, but you didn't. And now look at you sitting home looking like some bitches. And now you're done. You're done. It's over. Quit. Goodbye. Arrivederci. Once again, thank you to Chris Paul for getting these motherfuckers off my screen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this rant on last night's game between the Phoenix Suns and the Los Angeles Clippers. The Clippers are gone. Nothing makes me happier. The Clippers losing being a joy to my heart for all the fake Clipper fans in the media who consistently call Kawhi Leonard the best player in the world. It's fucking insane. Goodbye.